Far better it is to dare mighty things, to win glorious triumphs, even though checkered by failure, than to rank with those poor spirits who neither enjoy nor suffer much because they live in the gray twilight that knows neither victory nor defeat. Great political leaders deposit gold on the riverbed of history. One man in particular left a rich vein here in Minnesota in the early 1970s. Hello, my name is Marcia Fleur and I am very pleased to be part of this 80th birthday celebration. When I entered politics as a reporter, my first governor was Wendell Anderson. And as you know, you never forget your first. Let's talk about Wendy for a minute. Back then, he bet his entire future on one big, brazen, bold idea. Wendell Richard Anderson was born to Swedish parents on February 1st, 1933, at the height of the Great Depression. He was educated in the public schools of St. Paul, graduating from Johnson High School in 1950. He went on to earn a bachelor's degree from the University of Minnesota in 1954. After two years in the Army, he attended the University of Minnesota Law School and received a law degree in 1960. Somehow in the midst of all of this frenzied activity, he found time to enter politics and run for the House. In 1958, he was elected. Four years later, he entered the Senate. Now add to his resume, world-class athlete. He was, and still is, a hockey player. In 1956, he played on the U.S. Olympic hockey team that beat Poland, Germany, Czechoslovakia, Sweden, and Canada, coming in second to the Soviet Union that year to win the silver medal in the process. There was no shortage of turbulent water in Minnesota in the late 60s and early 70s. The Vietnam War was pitting the greatest generation against baby boomers in the streets of our cities. The DFL party had not recovered from the Keith Rolvag split of 1966, nor the highly contentious presidential contest between McCarthy and Humphrey in 1968. Add to the drama that on the first day of the 1971 legislative session, the indomitable Nick Coleman set off a constitutional crisis that lasted for eight full days. When they tried to wrestle control of the Senate from the conservatives by using Lieutenant Governor Rudy Perpich, who then presided over the Senate, as a voting member of the Senate's liberal caucus. Since there had been a campaign violation charge brought against this, uh, this senator who had been the senator-elect. Our strategy was uh, we had come in here, uh, take the votes on the various procedural issues, and the lieutenant governor would say there are 33 ayes, and there were 33 nays, and he would never recognize uh, the senator who had the campaign question and then the lieutenant governor would vote. So we would win the motions by 34 to 33. And we managed to hang on until, of course, uh, the Supreme Court said we couldn't do that. <laughs> it was also a time when angry mobs gathered at the Capitol and filled the armory to protest property tax increases that were driving Minnesotans from their homes and their farms. In addition, the mechanism for funding public education in Minnesota was broken. In fact, the state could have been sued for not meeting its constitutional obligation for uniform funding in education. Against this turbulent background, Wendell Anderson became the 33rd governor of Minnesota. He was only 37 years old. Governor Anderson met the challenge and persuaded Minnesotans to follow his vision. He saw a Minnesota full of possibilities, a people with a larger purpose, a mission. So I recommended to the legislature, controlled by the Republicans, both House and Senate, although only by one vote in the Senate, I propose that we raise the, uh, the income tax by about three quarters of a billion dollars. Uh, we also raised the sales tax by, uh, by a penny, and uh, ultimately we, in fact, passed a tax package to raise taxes three-quarters of a billion dollars or more. It 
permitted us to do several things. Number one, for five, six years, we reduced property taxes significantly at the local level by putting lots of money into local government from non-property tax sources. We increased the maintenance support for public education from 43 percent to 75. That's the Minnesota miracle. The miracle was we could raise taxes and not get thrown out of the state. I don't think anybody else could have done what he did. He was just a great communicator. He had great sense. And furthermore, he was a genius at working with the legislature. Uh, of course, it was the longest uh, special session in history. It all sounded new at the time, but it was really a reflection of the ideals of immigrants who came to this state, committed to make a better life for themselves and for their children. What they accomplished together that year put Minnesota on the front cover of Time magazine as the state that works and moved Minnesota's education system and economy to the forefront of the nation for three decades. Here's what Time magazine had to say about Governor Wendell Anderson. A man who embodies the state's virtues as much as any other Minnesotan is the state's young DFL governor, Wendell Anderson. The grandson of Swedish immigrants, a handsome former Olympic hockey player from a predominantly lower middle class Scandinavian neighborhood in East St. Paul, he has athletic dash and youthful charm that make many of his constituents think of a Midwestern Kennedy. Looking back in time, it's very clear that Wendy Anderson was not afraid to use his powers of persuasion to get his way. Although the Minnesota miracle was his biggest accomplishment, it wasn't his only accomplishment. A partial list of achievements would include the Fiscal Disparities Act, which redistributed property tax dollars from rich counties to poor counties, and the Loaned Executive Action Program that brought the best minds from business to help streamline state government. He created a Department of Finance so policymakers could get more comprehensive information when budgeting. They also held special interests and elected officials to account with campaign finance reform. Minnesota passed the Equal Rights Amendment for women and regulated handguns. There was much more. No politician can ride the bull forever, not even a stubborn Swede. So in 1978, when Wendell Anderson ran for his second term in the Senate, the Minnesota miracle gave way to the Minnesota massacre. Wendy Anderson will not be remembered as someone who lived in that gray twilight that knows neither victory nor defeat. Wendy was a leader who pushed the envelope, appealed to the better angels of our nature, and produced meaningful change that transformed the state in so many positive ways. He will be remembered as one of Minnesota's greatest governors. For what he did for Minnesota, all of us, and our children, we owe him a great debt of gratitude on this, his 80th birthday.